Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Friday. It's the 18th day of October 2024, and this is the day after. We're going to look at uh, the repercussions of the announcement made late last night, yesterday in Israel, that uh, Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas, the one who was the mastermind behind the terrorist attack on October 7th, 2023, is dead. He's been eliminated. And now it's really a very complicated situation. We're going to look into this and kind of explain where we're at right now as things get curiouser and curiouser. All right, in the headlines now, we have a report that uh, from a Hamas official that Khalid Mashal will take over for Sinwar. He is a you know very high up official there in Hamas. He's not there in Gaza, obviously. He's elsewhere. And we'll talk about him in a minute and how that's going to complicate things. Now, also Hezbollah has uh, vowed escalation after Sinwar's death, and Iran says resistance will endure, and this is exactly what we expected to happen. Now, we got a Berlin summit coming up, and Biden and his allies are expected to renew calls to end the war after Sinwar has been killed. Prime Minister Netanyahu, on the other hand, sees an opportunity in Sinwar's death. Does this mean escalation in fighting or a deal? And finally, our last headline is an opinion piece with Sinwar gone, what's next? Israel must leverage the moment of triumph. In fact, very level-headed opinion piece, and we'll talk about that. All right, first headline. Following Yaha Sinwar's assassination, senior Hamas official Khaled Mashal has taken over as the de facto leader. He will be responsible for negotiations on hostages. This comes from the Lebanese network LBCI, and they reported that Thursday, right afterwards. In other words, he didn't miss a beat. Hamas informed Turkish, Qatari, and Egyptian officials of Sinwar's death and warned that the prisoner exchange and ceasefire talks would become more complicated, as if we needed that. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Qatari Foreign Minister Mohammed bin Althani also discussed the killing's impact on negotiations. So uh, this man is a very well-known figure, uh, Khaled Mashal. And so um, basically what they've announced is, well, is this only going to complicate things? In other words, they're not going to lay down. They're not going to ask for a ceasefire. They're going to... Um, probably make more and more demands. So if anybody thought it was going to get easier, you've got to think again here. All right. And also headline number two, Hezbollah vows escalation after Sinwar's death. Iran says resistance will endure. This is from the Times of Israel. Tehran shares the image of Hamas's chief last moments. They glorify him as facing the enemy. And Hamas officially mum, but senior mem members appear to admit the leader is indeed dead. And they finally admitted that, but it was hard to do it at the, at the get-go. Iran's mission to the United Nations said Thursday that the killing of Hamas terror group leader Yahya Sinwar would lead to the strengthening of resistance in the region, hours after Israel confirmed it had killed the terror chief, while Lebanon's Hezbollah declared a transition to a new and escalatory phase in the war. In other words, it's going to get worse, not better. The Islamic Republic shared a still image taken from the drone footage of Sinwar's last moment in which the terror leader is seen face covered and injured, throwing a stick at the Israeli surveillance device. You may have seen the video. There's a still picture of that. He's up there in the room. He's already been injured, and he just throws a stick at the drone that comes in. And the next picture of him, if you some, some of the outlets show that, show him dead there with his mouth open, and um, it's obviously him. And so the building collapsed on him. That was how he met his demise. All right, the mission compared Sinwar with Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. Now, this is interesting, their comparison. A longtime foe of Iran, whom American troops captured in 2003. When the U.S. forces dragged a disheveled Saddam Hussein out of an underground hole, he begged them not to kill him despite being armed. Those who regard Saddam as their model of resistance eventually collapsed, the mission said on X. And again, this is from Iran. However, when Muslims took up the martyr Sinwar standing on the battlefield in combat attire and out in the open, not in a hideout facing the enemy, the spirit of resistance will be strengthened. All right. So and they're thinking this is just going to cause us all the more to want to fight. Sinwar was found with the 40,000 Israeli shekels. It's about ten thousand dollars in cash, ten thousand seven hundred and seventy bucks in cash documents. And this is interesting, including the passport of a Gazan teacher. Uh, the Israeli military said the troop terror leader was probably attempting to escape to the north of Gaza to safer areas as troops closed in. In other words, the coward was fleeing the scene with a fake passport when he met his uh, demise. All right, so um, that's the latest on that. Now, here's, herein lies the problem, too. We've got all kinds of complicating issues, and this doesn't help. 
because right now there's a Berlin summit coming up. And Biden's allies expected to renew the call to end the war, of course, after Sinwar is killed. You know, ceasefire, end the war, blah, blah, blah. U.S. leader to meet German, French, and British counterparts as terror chief's demise is seen as removing obstacle to ceasefire efforts. Macron urges end to Lebanon fighting. No, it's not going to end the fighting people. It's not going to make it easier. Like we said, it's going to make it more complicated. Okay, U.S. President, lame duck president, let's get it right. Joe Biden was set to meet European leaders during his farewell visit to Germany today on Friday, where they are expected to renew calls for a Gaza ceasefire after Israel said it killed leader, a Hamas leader, Yahya Sinwar. While still on Air Force One, Biden hailed the death of the mastermind of the dev devastating October 7th, 2023 onslaught that opened the ongoing of a war as a good day. This was a good day, saying it removed a key obstacle to the Gaza ceasefire and hostage deal. The president meeting, president's meetings in Berlin were expected to address the conflict, pitting Israel against Hamas and its Hezbollah allies, including the risk of a wider escalation with Iran. He's going to hold talks with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, French, Meta, Meta, uh, French President Macron, and British Prime Minister Keir Starmer. Sinwar's death is widely seen as a pivotal moment in the war that began when Palestinian terror group Hamas led a devastating cross-border attack on southern Israel that killed over 1,200 people, mostly civilians, during which time the terrorists abducted, as we know, like 251 people taken as hostages to Gaza. Israel's military response is focused on destroying Hamas and saving the hostages. Biden said Thursday he would congratulate Prime Minister Netanyahu, but also discuss the pathway for securing the release of hostages and ending this war once and for all. Well, Joe, um, there's something you need to remember. The war is just not on one front there in Gaza. It's on seven fronts. Hezbollah, a more powerful terrorist group, with their allies in both Iraq and Syria, the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, and of course, you've got the Houthis down in Yemen. And then finally, of course, the head of the snake there in Iran, they're still fighting. They haven't stopped. And so even if you stop there in Gaza, that's not going to stop fighting, not going to stop the war. All right. Headline number four. And this is interesting. The prime minister says he sees an opportunity in Sinwar's death. But the question is, well, does this mean an escalation in the fighting or a deal? Now, what's interesting, today is the day, if you recall what we talked about yesterday in the morning on breaking news, that uh, after the end of Sukkot, uh, what's well, the beginning of Sukkot? It's the um, you know eight days uh, feast of temporary shelters or tabernacles, seven day feast, and the last day of celebration. That there was supposed to be a meeting today of the cabinet of Israel's cabinet to discuss what they're going to do with Iran. You know the attack there because let's not forget that that's still on the on the table. But now we've got this complication: the death of Sinwar. What do you do now? And since the Sabbath is coming up in a few hours, it'll be the Shabbat, the Sabbath probably about four or five hours from now, um, Israeli time. We're about 4.30, 4.45 in the morning recording this from the West Coast in California. Uh, they're 10 hours ahead of us, usually about eight o'clock at night, the Sabbath begins. And from eight o'clock Friday night to about eight o'clock Saturday night, there's nothing. You don't hear anything out of Israel, everything's shut down. And so they have to have a meeting today and they may announce something before the Sabbath begins and what they're going to do, but it's really complicated things. Now they got two major issues. You got not only doing something with Iran, but now what do you do with uh, Sinwar? And so anyway, uh, and it was a chance killing. This is something that's really interesting. They didn't know it was Sinwar when they knocked, knocked him off, when they killed these terrorists in the building. They didn't realize he was one of the three that was there. Now Netanyahu said it's the beginning of the end of the war in the Gaza Strip, but it's not in entirely clear what he meant by this bold statement. But then again, it hasn't been clear throughout the entire war. Uh, the IDF's remarkable tactical successes can lead to the end of Hamas's rule in Gaza, the disarming of its terror army, and the return of the hostages. The elimination of Hamas's most dominant figure could open a small window for opportunity, the story says, to achieve Israel's elusive war aims, none of which yet have been secured. Senior U.S. officials, including Lloyd Austin, Defense Secretary, and Secretary of State Blinken both indicated they see a chance to end the war in the new future, near future, and many world leaders have echoed that sentiment, with usually Israel capitulating. Now, headline number five is from is Israel Hayom. That is a, a conservative site there, as opposed to most of the leftist sites we see in Israel. And it's an opinion piece, and it's very well done. It's fat, longer than what I'm going to read to you. But here's the headline. 
With Sinwar gone, what's next? Israel must le leverage the moment of triumph. All right. Unlike other issues, such as the future of Hamas and its leadership or the fate of Gaza and its residents, the hostage situation allows no time for deliberation. It is painfully evident that the captives are dying in captivity and Sinwar's elimination potentially exacerbates their risk. Uh, Israel must prioritize their safe return, the war's primary objective, before becoming entangled in other, other matters and fronts. In a year of unprecedented tragedy, the story goes on, the elimination of Sinwar in Gaza emerges, uh, emerges as a rare moment of an unequivocal success, sparking a brief sense of jubilation among many Israelis since he was the diabolical mastermind of the October 7th massacre. He ranked prominently among Israel's most reviled foes throughout history. He met his demise at the commencement of Sukkot, the very holiday his actions had desecrated a year earlier. Remember, it was the last day of Sukkot, the last day of the Feast of the Temporary Shelters or Tabernacles, where this attack occurred. And so it's poetic a year later on the same feast that he meets his demise here. Okay, now here, here comes the however. However, in the wake of this momentary elation, an equally comprehensible surge of concern for the hostages' welfare emerges. The power vacuum created by Sinwar's elimination raises critical questions. What is the current status of the captives following their captives' leader's demise? Have orders been issued to harm the hostages? Does a functioning command structure in Gaza persist in issuing orders? Does Israel possess adequate intelligence regarding the hostages' conditions and whereabouts? Uh, is there a feasible means to incentivize those holding the hostages to ensure their safety or facilitate their release, perhaps through offers of immunity or financial inducements? So they would give them some money and say, we're going to give you immunity. Let us know where the hostages are. We'll call today. Now, unlike other issues, such as the future of Hamas and its leadership or the fate of Gaza and its residents, this situation, again, allows no time or deliberation. It's painfully evident the hostages are dying. They must do something before you get entangled in other matters and fronts. But then as this article says, and this is so important, Sinwar's demise has significantly complicated negotiation efforts. As both the all-powerful commander in Gaza and the head of Hamas's political wing, he served as the key point of contact. In his absence, there exists no clear address for a dialogue in Gaza or Qatar. Israel must swiftly identify alternative avenues for communication, be it in Gaza, Qatar, or elsewhere. The situation demands creative diplomacy and potentially bold offers to expeditiously resolve this most urgent and painful issue. And the, the article goes on, again, some Israel Hayom, if you want to read it about, you know, the, the possibilities, the options Israel has. So remember the situation is more complicated than ever, especially with the looming threat of an attack on Iran. Will that be postponed now? We just don't know. And again, this is never a dull moment here with what's taking place as um, we look at the situation. Now, again, as we mentioned here, and if you're new to us, we do this every day. We talk about what's going on, but we always talk about it in light of what the Bible says the world is going to be like at the time of the end. And we're very much optimistic all the time here because we know at the end of the day what's going to take place. As the illustration we give, we've read the last chapter of the book. We've seen the last act of the play. We've watched the last scene of the movie. We know God will rule. Jesus Christ will return. His kingdom will be set up. Those of us who have trusted him will rule and reign with him. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. But before we get there, it's going to be more and more difficult. This is what the Bible tells us, and this is what we must realize. And so we're here every day to encourage you to realize what the scripture says, to understand that difficult time, more difficult times are ahead. But again, there's the proverbial light is at the end of the tunnel. The blue skies are ahead. And so check out our website, Educating Our World. It's a free, we have free downloads of all our books, 65 books, include a dozen on Bible prophecy, uh, particularly 25 signs. We're near the end. You'll want to look at that. Then the other one, look up a timeline of 50 last days events. If you want to know what's going to take place according to scripture in the future before yeah, eternity begins, as eternity is our 50th timeline. Unfortunately, that never ends. Anyway, this, this is the situation. Now, today, like we said, Israel will shut down in a few hours, and so there'll be no, nothing coming out of them uh, until tomorrow night. So uh, we may or may not do a second edition of breaking news today, depending if anything really major comes up. Uh, we know th these issues are trying to be decided now from Israelis' perspective, and pray for them, too, because what a, what a mess they're in. 
um, because you're going to get immediately Biden, his cohorts there in Berlin saying, cease fire, cease fire, stop. We need a 21 day cease fire with Hezbollah. We need a cease fire everywhere. It's the last thing Israel needs to do right now. So we'll see. Uh, again, never a dull moment here. Uh, so we'll just pay attention and uh, let you know when we know something. All right. I'm Don Stewart. As always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless you.